OK, let's see how we can use this to measure cosmological parameters. Now, the benefit of this whole linear physics thing is that it's actually mathematically very simple, very straightforward, because you can break everything up into its components and treat them all separately, which means we can calculate it with exquisite precision. It's not like as complicated or messy as the universe more recently, which is very hard to calculate, like trying a supernova explosion. Yeah. But to this, everything's linear, everything's simple, everything's small. And what this means is you can calculate how long, for example, those the scale of those first peaks are. These are the ones where the stuff has just fallen in, the first peak. Yep. And that's basically just how far sound can travel in that time. Right, very so simple physics. Yeah, so it's that's very simple scale. Very good. You have to allow for the fact that space was expanding all the time while it was going on, but we can do that. That's also pretty straightforward mathematically. So this, if you like, gives us a standard ruler. Oh, a standard ruler. And so we can see how big that ruler looks. That's similar to seeing how bright something appears as a function of distance we have the ability to calculate how long a ruler looks yes. as a function of distance. So we've talked about using standard candles a lot in this course, so things of known brightness, then you see how bright they appear to be, and that gives you the distance. In principle, you can also use something that's of known length. If you know how long something really is and move it further away, it should look smaller, so that gives you the distance. So in principle, we know how long this is because we can calculate the physics of the early universe. We can measure what angle, which is about one degree, these lumps appear to be, and that will give us a distance, which is just going to be in angle in radians equals the length divided by the distance to it. Well, that distance has to be a bit of a special distance, right, Paul? Yeah. It's not just your normal ruler distance. We have to worry about the fact that the universe is expanding. And so when I look at, for example, a ruler um, back in time, the light waves are going to be going out, and then they get kind of sucked back in because the universe was smaller in the past. But we can take care of all that thanks yeah. to general relativity and the Robertson-Walker metric that we've talked about. That's right. So we can take care of all that. So it's not quite as simple as this, but the basic principle is right. However, this turns out to be very sensitive to the geometry of space. So here, let's say theta is just L over D, but what happens if we lived in a saddle-shaped universe? This is the open universe we talked about early on. So right. here, you've got length L once again, but now the angle's smaller. Right, and so that's going to change if we go back to our, our, our equation with distance. So effectively what we do is we calculate a distance uh, in gen using general relativity such that this is true. We say this is true. Right. By and choosing our definition of distance to fit that's it properly. Right. Uh, and then we're going to see that uh, effectively this is equivalent to saying there is 180 degrees in a triangle effectively. And now when we have a universe shaped as a saddle, that's not true. And so the universe is going to distort what things look like very sensitively once we take care of all the other bookkeeping of general relativity. This is right back to what we talked about last time, about trying to measure the geometry. At last we right. can do it because we've got a standard ruler that we can actually see out there in space. If on the other hand we're in a closed universe, a, it's like a, a, sphere, a spherical universe, in this case the angles inside a triangle add up to more than 180 degrees. So now this angle here is going to be bigger than just Right, and so D. this effectively, this type of universe essentially magnifies, distorts, makes things look larger, and the other universe makes things look smaller. And so we should be able to differentiate the shape of the universe by how long that ruler looks like, all things else being equal. And that's been done. So what did we get? Well, we found that to within 1%, the universe is flat. And we should say, you put down omega matter plus omega lambda, but what we really mean is omega anything here. You can, if there's some, something we're missing, it adds up on this side of the equation. Yeah. So everything adds up yeah. to the universe. Because remember, there wasn't enough matter to make the universe flat, but it turns yeah. out that this lambda, this dark energy, can also flatten the universe out. So it presumably indicates that the sum of the matter plus lambda plus anything else weird that's going on adds up to one <coughs> and gives the universe it's actually pretty damn near flat. Right, and there's no way to hide from this. No matter what you throw in the universe, it's going to be seen in the shape of the entire universe. So, so it could be just a little bit one side, a little bit the other side of this geometry, but it's pretty close. And of course, inflation will predict that it'll be pretty much exactly one. That's right. So it's an interesting uh, way to look at inflation again. And it predicted in advance you should see something like this. If it had come out at point 0.8, inflation would be dead. Yes, absolutely. Here's a simulation from Wayne Hu again showing the actual effect of changing the geometry of the universe. And what we're looking at here is the fluctuation spectrum as we change the universe's the sum of um, curvature and 
um, dark energy, so that's telling you from an open to a closed universe. Right, so essentially what we're doing here is we're raising uh, the curvature in one case, or, uh, and then that's the, uh, this line here is with curvature. What happens is the universe uh, changes in curvature, and then the blue one is if you change the amount of cosmological constant. So you can see almost nothing happens until the very end about the cosmological constant, but we're really sensitive to the shape of the universe. And so this is a great way to go through and to measure essentially how big the bumps and wiggles are of the universe, and that tells us the shape of it very accurately. Yes, and you can see the effect of the shape is more or less just to move things sideways. Yep. So you get the same pattern imprinted on the microwave background. All that's happening is that pattern is appears to us to be on a smaller or larger angle depending on what sort of geometry we're in. Yeah, and you can sort of understand that because when we run the universe back in reverse, you really are at a state where the universe is more or less in the same state no matter what it's made out of now to first order back then. And so you expect those acoustic waves to essentially be the same independent of things like the cosmological constant.